So in previous videos, I ranked the top 10 royal houses from Europe, as well as the top 10 royal houses from Asia. Well, today I'm going to continue that theme and cover the top 10 royal houses from Africa. Like in the previous two videos, I'll be limiting myself to medieval and modern dynasties and basing my choices on three criteria. The size of the area they ruled, how long they ruled, and their overall influence on the history of the continent. And once again, I looked to some other history YouTubers for help. This time, three channels that focus exclusively on African history. First of all, I watched a video by Home Team History called Top 10 Royal Dynasties of Africa, and I considered his choices. However, I also contacted Jabari over on the channel From Nothing. He has an active Discord server full of people interested in African history, so we got his subscribers to vote on their top picks as well. Finally, I contacted up-and-coming African history YouTuber Hidden History and asked him to provide me with his own top 10 list. By combining the rankings from these three channels, I was able to come up with a definitive list of the 10 greatest royal houses from Africa. Number 10, the House of Zulu. Some people might be surprised that this dynasty ended up at the bottom of the list because among many people of European descent, the Zulus are pretty much the only sub-Saharan African dynasty they've ever heard of. For example, back when I first started university, I used to play the video game Civilization. Now, I'm actually a lot older than many of my subscribers, so I'm not talking about Civ 5 or Civ 6 here. I'm actually talking about Civilization version 1.0. Anyway, in that original game, the only African dynasty you could play, other than the Egyptians of course, was the Zulus. This is actually kind of strange because the Zulu Empire was by no means the greatest empire that Sub-Saharan Africa has ever produced. I mean, yes, they did develop some unique military strategies which allowed them to conquer a bunch of nearby tribes and reshape society in their region. And yes, they are notable in that they scored several major victories against the Boers and the British. But I feel like they are mostly remembered because they show up in European history books, not because they were a key player in the whole of African history. That said, I think they do deserve a spot in the top 10, so here they are. I should also point out that their dynasty does still rule today, albeit as a dependent monarchy within the Republic of South Africa. If you want to learn more about their royal house, you can check out the video we did on their family tree, which I'll link to in the description. Number 9. The House of Askia This was the second of two families who ruled over the Songhai Empire in West Africa. The Songhai Empire, with its capital at Gao, holds the distinction of being the largest empire in all of African history. If it had only lasted longer, this dynasty would likely have ranked much higher. The Songhai Empire was established by a man named Sunni Ali in 1464, when he took advantage of the weakening Mali Empire and gained independence for his people. Sunni Ali reigned for 28 years, but when he died, one of his generals, named Askia Mohammed, seized power within a year, and thus the House of Askia was established. Under the Askia dynasty, the Songhai Empire grew larger and more prosperous and became a major center of learning. But the Askias were only able to hold on to power for about one century. At that point, they lost a major battle with Morocco and declined rapidly. Number 8. The House of Lukeni or Kilukeni We now go from the largest empire to one of the smallest kingdoms, the Kingdom of Congo. But don't let its small land area fool you. 
At the beginning of the modern period, the Kingdom of Congo was one of the most centralized and highly developed states in sub-Saharan Africa, and it housed a population of about half a million people. It was founded by a man named Lukeni Lua Nimi, and his kanda, or family, ended up ruling the kingdom for its first 177 years. They developed the state into the main trading hub in Central Africa, and therefore when the Portuguese arrived, it was one of the main kingdoms that the Europeans traded with. Unfortunately, one of the main things that they traded was human slaves. Although the House of Kilukeni was eventually replaced with the House of Quilu and then the House of Kinlaza, the Kingdom of Congo was able to remain independent all the way up until 1857. And because it was the Kilukeni who built this long-lasting kingdom, they definitely deserve a spot on the list. Number 7. The House of Changamire This was the dynasty that founded the Rosvi Empire in what is today Zimbabwe, which ended up replacing the Mutapa Empire as the dominant power in the region. The name Rosvi comes from the local word for plunder, and indeed, the Razvi were primarily known as a warrior nation, inventing some of the tactics that were later adopted by the Zulus. But they were also farmers, miners, and builders. They revived the tradition of building houses and walls out of stone, a practice that first started in this part of Africa 600 years earlier with the construction of Great Zimbabwe. The word Zimbabwe literally means stone house, and the Razvi built a lot of them. The impressive ruins can be seen today in their capital city of Danangombe. Number 6. The House of Sise. This dynasty is the earliest royal dynasty on this list, and it was responsible for building the first major empire in West Africa, the Ghana Empire also known as the Wagadu Empire. Its founder was a king named Kaya Magan Sise, and his house went on to rule for almost 400 years. Below the Sahara Desert is an area known as the Sahel, a semi-arid zone that basically ends at the Niger River, which is the third longest river in Africa, and the most important one in West Africa. This area had been farming and making advanced art for 2,000 years before the emergence of the Ghana Empire. They were also using iron around 1000 BCE, which is around the same time that it started to be used in Europe and the Middle East, demonstrating that ancient sub-Saharan Africa was by no means the uncivilized place that many white Europeans think that it was. But the Sisse dynasty was the first to build a large, centralized, multi-ethnic state in the region, and they were able to do this because of the increase in trans-Saharan trade. During their rule, the first large cities started to form along the Niger River, and Islam started to play a role in the region. But as far as we know, the members of the Sisse dynasty were not Muslim. They followed traditional African religion, but allowed Islamic scholarship to develop alongside it. Number 5. The House of Aloai There have been a lot of dynasties based out of Morocco in North Africa. Of these, the Almoravids are one of the best known, mostly because they conquered much of Spain and slowed the Christian Reconquista there. But the Almoravid dynasty only lasted about 100 years. In contrast, the Alawites have lasted for 378 years and, in fact, still reign in Morocco today. At their peak, they also ruled over a territory as large as the Almoravids, stretching all the way down to the Niger River. We recently did a family tree video about the Alawite dynasty on this channel, so I won't go through their history again. If you want to learn more about them, I'll leave a link to the video in the description. Number 4. The House of Sefawa This Islamic dynasty was the second of two major dynasties to rule over an empire which today is usually referred to as the Kanem Bornu Empire one of the least known empires in African history. 
However, this empire was super important. Located in what is today Chad, it controlled a good portion of the trans-Saharan trade for a really long time. It lasted, in some form or another, for about 1,200 years. The first dynasty, the Dugua dynasty, followed African traditional religion, whereas the second dynasty, the Sefawa dynasty, was Islamic. It ruled for 761 years, all the way up to 1846, which makes it the longest reigning royal house on this list. Number 3. The House of Odudua This is yet another really long-lasting dynasty. It traces its origins back to a legendary figure named Odudua, who is seen as being the father of the Yoruba people, and also, upon death, one of their gods. The Yoruba are the second largest ethnic group in sub-Saharan Africa today, and they live primarily in Nigeria. A related ethnic group, known as the Edo, also from Nigeria, are said to have come from the line of Odudua as well. According to legend, Odudua and his son Ogun both had an affair with a woman named Lakange, who gave birth to a child named Oranmian. Oranmian was thus either the last son of Odudua or his grandson. Either way, Oranmian ended up being Odudua's most important descendant, for it was he who established the kingdom of Benin, also known as the kingdom of Edo, which lasted for about 600 years and was continuously ruled by Oranmian's line. Nigerian kings are known as Obas, and in 1440, an Oba named Ewuare the Great expanded his realm, transforming the kingdom of Benin into more of an empire. That empire lasted until 1897, when it was taken over by the British. However, the line of rulers still exists, and nowadays the Oba of Benin serves as the traditional ruler of the Edo people within the Federal Republic of Nigeria, the current Oba being Ewuare II. But this is just one of the many lines that claim descent from the House of Odudua. Many of the other traditional rulers in Nigeria claim descent from Odudua as well, such as the Oba of Ile Ife, the Oba of Oyo, and the Oba of Lagos. Number 2. The Kita Dynasty I've already told you about the Ghana Empire and the Songhai Empire. Well, in between the rule of those two empires was the Mali Empire, and of the three great West African empires, it was by far the greatest. It was founded by Sundiata Kita, and his dynasty continued to rule it for over 400 years, although it was during the first 200 years that it reached its peak of glory. The Mali Empire's most famous ruler was Mansa Musa, who is known for having been the richest man in all of world history. We did a video about his family tree already, so if you want to learn more about him, you can check that out. But let me say that not only did he make the Mali Empire incredibly rich, he also made it a major center of culture and learning. Many of the iconic buildings in Timbuktu date from his reign. I'll also point out that although the Kita dynasty no longer reigns as monarchs, the family does still exist today, and several of its members have rose to prominence, such as Modibo Kita, the first president of modern Mali. Okay, number one, the House of Solomon, better known as the Solomonic Dynasty. This dynasty ticks all the boxes. In terms of longevity, it ruled Ethiopia for at least 700 years, making it one of the longest reigning dynasties in African history. Only the Sefawa dynasty can claim to have ruled longer. Of course, if the traditional stories are believed, the dynasty has been around much longer. Yakunu Amlak, the founder of the modern dynasty, 
claimed to be a descendant of the ancient kings of Aksum, who in turn were supposedly the descendants of King Solomon. If true, that would make this dynasty about 3,000 years old. However, in my videos on the royal houses of Europe and Asia, I restricted myself to data that is considered to be historically verifiable. So I've done the same thing here, and that's why I've gone with 704 years rather than something longer. However, keep in mind that 704 years is still a really long time. In terms of size, again, the territory that the Solomonic dynasty ruled over was one of the largest in African history. Coming in at 1.2 million square kilometers, only the Songhai Empire was larger. Finally, when it comes to influence, this dynasty was extremely important when it comes to African history as a whole. As the only part of Africa never colonized by Europeans, Ethiopia has been an inspiration when it comes to taking pride in African culture, and it has been a central player in the Pan-African movement. The Solomonic dynasty is also unique in that it has an entire religion, Rastafarianism, based on it. These facts, combined with the dynasty's role in maintaining Ethiopia's unique form of Christianity and its centuries of contact with other nations, makes it a pretty obvious choice for the top spot. If you want to learn more about the Solomonic dynasty and its potential links to the distant past, you guessed it, we have a video that traces its family tree. That one was made in collaboration with African history YouTubers From Nothing and Hidden History. You can find a link to that and lots of other African history content in the description. So what do you think? Do you agree or disagree with the rankings? Feel free to leave a comment and let us know what you would change and why. Thanks for watching.